One way that we can use the Doppler effect is to just get the line of sight velocity, how quickly is something moving towards us or away from us. Now, the other way we can use it is looking at line widths. So here we have an emission line, zoomed in. Uh, let's say this is changing frequency or changing wavelength. We know that it emits at a particular wavelength, but if we zoom in around it, there's actually some width to the line. There's a peak and then tails on either side. It's not actually a perfectly defined frequency. There's a range of frequencies that we detect it over. And that is because of the Doppler effect within the object itself. There are many things that can do this. One explanation is internal motions. Suppose I'm looking at a cloud. And the cloud is moving towards me at 300 kilometers per second. So that line, the whole thing, will be blue shifted by a certain amount. But then if we look at the width of the line, we're going to see variation. Because inside the cloud there's random motion as well. Just because the cloud has temperature. If the cloud's at absolute zero, nothing's moving in the cloud. But if it has temperature, that means the particles are bouncing around. And some will be moving towards me a little bit faster, and some will be moving towards me a little bit slower. Well, let's take the simple case. The cloud not moving at all. Half the particles will be moving towards me, and half will be moving away from me at any given time. So the light that they're emitting, some will be blue shifted a little bit, some will be red shifted a little bit. That creates, instead of a single frequency, a width of frequencies. So the width of the line can tell us internal temperature. Line width. <coughs> Y'all see that? If it's a hotter cloud, there's going to be faster motions in there and a broader line. A cooler cloud, the narrower the line. So the width of that little itty bitty line can tell us the temperature. So internal temperature, but on top of that, we can get Doppler effects. So if the spectrum is supposed to look like this. I don't know, converging sequence. And in reality, we see this, a little fuzzy. I know, not very good. But um, all the lines are shifted. That's telling us line of sight motion. But then we also have width of the line, which is telling us internal temperature. Or maybe it's not random motions. Maybe it's organized motions, internal flows. Uh, for example, suppose we're looking at a distant star. And the star is so far away, we can't resolve it. Meaning we can't see one side from the other, just one blurry speck. It's so far away, you know, we're getting all the light all together. Well, one side of the star is rotating towards us. The light it's emitting on that side would be blue shifted. One side of the star is rotating away from us. On that side, the light would be red shifted because it's moving away from us. Well, we see all that light together because it's not a nearby star like the sun where we can look at one side or the other. It's so far away, we get all the light together, and so we get a wide line here instead of a narrow line. And that's not due to random motions of the object, like due to temperature, but this is actually due to rotation. So you have to interpret carefully these widths. It's not necessarily a measure of temperature. It could be internal temperature. It could be internal motions, like organized. Temperature, it's random motions bouncing around. Here, this is an internal motion. You can imagine gas clouds with their organized flows of the gas as well. So you can start to get into uh, physical descriptions, but you've got to be careful about it. So here's a table that summarizes everything. Basically, different things that you can observe and what you can learn. Let me just run through it real quick. So if we have a continuous spectrum, if it's thermal, let's say, the peak frequency tells you the temperature by Wien's law. Also, the colors can be used to give you the temperature, or the overall emission um, by Stefan's law. If you see lines present, either absorption or emission lines, their presence and their intensities can tell you not only composition, but temperature. As we talked about with hydrogen, uh, if it's cold, we'll get a Lyman series. If it's warmer, a Bomber series. If it's warmer, a Passion series. Uh, those are unique to hydrogen, so it tells us composition. It's also telling us the temperature, depending on what series we actually see. Line width can tell us internal temperature as well. Uh, rotational or turbulent motion, that's what I meant by internal motions. And we didn't get into it. Sometimes you can figure out densities, magnetic field strengths. These, we'll come back to these in 102. Uh, we'll make use of uh, this information. And then there's just the line of sight velocity that we get from the Doppler shift. So grand conclusion is, you put the light through a prism, disperse it, 
measure everything carefully, and you can learn a tremendous amount of physics about what's actually going on. And that's how we learn the bulk of what's going on out there in the universe. It's not just taking pretty pictures. Questions about anything in lesson three? <laughs>